Well, he's been a thorn in Stephen Harper's side for almost as long as he's been prime minister. Never shy of opinions when it comes to the conservative leader, former Newfoundland progressive conservative premier Danny Williams joins me from Toronto. All right, Danny Williams. Harper 2015, uh, any better or worse than Harper 2008 when you launched the anyone but conservative movement? Uh, worse by the day, Don. If you go back and look over his record, uh, you know, since he's been in office and even before he got in, I mean, you know, this guy, in my opinion, you know, wants to divide the country in order to conquer and get reelected. He's, you know, pitting regions against regions, religion against religion, nationality against nationality, haves and have nots. Uh, you know, that's his modus operandi. That's the way he wants to operate. And, uh, you know, I think the people of this country, Canada, deserve better. I love this country. And, you know, to have Stephen Harper, you know, go back in as prime minister, I can't even understand how he's in the game. You can't trust him. He lacks integrity. It's, uh, I could go on for days. <laughs> I'm sure you could. But what's bothering you most about this particular campaign? Well, just the fact that, you know, even Canadians would consider bringing him back again. You know, you know what he's done. And, you know, I mean, if you look at the groups that, you know, over the years that, you know, he stopped funding for, whether it happens to be uh, Aboriginals, he, you know, the Kelowna Accord was a big part of Paul you know, Martin's. Uh, you know, legacy, and he, he trashed that. You know, veterans are now coming out with an ABC campaign. Uh, you know, he's, he's defunded research. You know, we had uh, demonstrations here about the death of evidence. So what he does is, you know, as long as he can keep everything in secrecy and keep the people in the country ignorant and in the dark, then he survives because they don't know what the heck he's doing, you know. And, and then he portrays himself as the savior of the economy. Well, let's look at Harper's economic record. Hmm. You know, they we're the only country in the G session, in, uh, the G7 in recession, six out of eight deficits, the dollar is down to the northern peso range that have, people talked about years ago. Uh, you know, we're 139th uh, in the world this year, um, countries progressing uh, economically. I can, you know, it goes on and on and on. He's an economic failure, yet he's saying to the people of the country, I'm your only hope for the economy. One of these, a couple of these issues that's got a lot of people talking anyway is the whole idea of whether there should be a ban on kneecaps at citizenship ceremonies and whether terrorists with convicted terrorism records should be stripped of their citizenship and sent elsewhere. Does that concern you? It concerns me because he's trying to play on bigotry and that in order to get attention. You see, that's a great political tactic. I mean, he is a good political strategy. He's a lousy prime minister, but he's a good political strategist. And, you know, if he can take, you know, minor niche issues and make a big deal out of them, then he doesn't have to talk about jobs. He doesn't talk, you know, have to talk about the economy as much. Uh, you know, he doesn't have to talk about health care. Very, very important to the people of this country. But if he can get them split on issues that affect maybe two women in Canada, uh, then, uh, you know, he succeeds because he distracts, he divides, uh, and he gets that critical number that he needs in order to get another majority government. Now, you're a businessman now, but uh, you don't deal with uh, agriculture or auto parts. But I'm wondering what you think of this Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, I know Newfoundland couldn't get any further away from the Pacific side of things. But having said that, uh, is, this a, is this not going to polish Stephen Harper's economic credentials at all? Well, you know, you have to look at his record and see what he's done himself. You know. A good trade deal is good for Canada. There's no denying that, and I don't think any of the leaders in this election would deny that. But that depends on whether it's a good trade deal. Uh, you know, you've got a guy now who's got his back up against the wall. He's two weeks away from an election that he's in trouble in. Uh, is he the guy you would want negotiating a deal for you? If I was on the other side of the table and I was representing Japan or one of the other countries, I'd know a guy that I had in front of me who was weak and actually had to give up on positions in order to get a deal because he wants to get reelected. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. side of that, though, is if I was a dairy producer or a poultry producer or an auto worker, I'd be very concerned about the commitments that this guy makes because if, in fact, he's saying, you know, trust me, and I'm telling you, you can't trust him, uh, you know, we'll deliver four-odd billion dollars to compensate you. Well, two things. First of all, he won't be around. And secondly, you can't believe him. Uh, because it, he, what he did with Newfoundland and Labrador, I believe Premier Dunderdale was in at the time. You know, CETA was getting resolved. He came to Newfoundland, and, he, or he spoke to Newfoundland and Labrador and said, we'll give your fishery $400 million, just sign up. And, of course, he reneged. So you can't take him on his word. And uh, well, are you, so that's, yeah, I think it speaks for itself. Are you suggesting voters, and, and you're not a shepherd and then that sheep, but what should voters in Newfoundland and Labrador do? Should they vote Liberal or NDP or none of the above? 
Well, what I'm basically saying is don't vote for Harper. You know, I mean, this country cannot sustain another four or five years of this guy. He's not good. I mean, internationally, you know, our reputation in climate change, for example, the, the way we're perceived. The New York Times did an article, I think, back in August about how the whole perception of Canada has gone way, way down under a Stephen Harper government. Uh, you know, so I'm saying to people, like, you, know, don't, you know, don't vote for Harper. Vote either Liberal or New Democratic or Green if you want to, but don't vote for Harper. I'm saying who not to vote for, but I'm not, obviously not encouraging people to vote for any particular other party. Senator David Wells of Newfoundland says, uh, you're just saying this because you sense Stephen Harper's coming back. Is that, your, is that what you're sensing? Uh, no, you know, not, a, not at all. I, I was asked to do it. I've been asked down for the last six, eight weeks to do national interviews, and I've said no. And, of course, then Harper came, decided to come to Newfoundland on Saturday, uh, and a, an interview was requested by me, so I said, fine, I'll do it. You know, I just think people need to know what I've experienced with this guy. And, you know, I've seen him up close and personal, and I didn't like what I saw from day one. And, you know, the premiers of our country, uh, you know, don't even get a meeting with him anymore. If you're on side uh, and you're prepared to kiss his butt, then fine, you know, you'll probably get a meeting. But if you've got an issue with him, uh, then he's not going to meet with you, nor is he going to meet with the premiers collectively. So he's gone out and he's negotiated a free trade agreement, which we don't know the details on. Uh, there's no major consult consultation with the premiers on this. The opposition hasn't been involved. So, you know, you've really got to be really careful how you deal with him. And uh, his suppression of information and keeping the media and everybody else away from him uh, is disconcerting. Danny Williams, uh, we just never figure out where you stand on issues. It's too bad you waffle so much like this, but uh, we appreciate you coming on the show, as always. <laughs> Uh, Don, one final thing, you know, uh, for him to stand up as Prime Minister and say he knew nothing about the Mike Duffy situation when everybody else in his office did, not believable. Okay. Right. Final parting words from Danny Williams on this campaign. Thank you, sir. We always appreciate you coming on. Pleasure, Don.